Mr. Speaker, we need to address certain things. The Nigerian youth, the social media, the social influencers, all of these are making the narrative that we are seeing today. Except we are joking with ourselves. Social media, yes, though good, has its negative impact. Let me first thank you for condemning the wanton killings and carnage that happened at Lekki. When I went through the comments, I could not believe it, Mr. Speaker. The curses, the abuses from children. And I ask myself, is this Nigeria? What is going on? Children cursing? People having the effrontery to enter an Obas palace, hold the staff of office. Culture is gone. Mr. Speaker, in the next five years, there will be no Nigeria. If we don't start now. The youth is not only those who do the peaceful protest. Those who have looted, who have destroyed lives, they are youths as well. Mr. Speaker, pregnant women went into malls picked things and went away. When shall we change this narrative? I put it to all the celebrities out there. All the motivational speakers. This is the only country we have. The wealthy will go. When anything happens, what is our common saying? We die here. Please, Celebrities, please, social media influencers, stop the hatred already. You have a means, constitutionally, to change governments. It's called your P. For me, as a practitioner, and also for the kind of thing I do, I... I, I re watch it over and over again. I can see why or where people thought it meant uh, regulating the social uh, media space. That was not in any way, in any way, categorically in any way what I meant. I never meant... Shut the hell up, I, I, liar. I, when I do things in my constituency, I put it up in the social media space. Why can I ask for that? Besides, people have special needs and persons. It's part. It's constitutional. So I, I could never have called for the social media space to be um, to be regulated. No. Okay. You say you're not calling for a regulation of social media, but there's a part in that video clip I saw earlier where you're saying that um, Nigeria may cease to exist in five years if nothing is done. What exactly were you referring to? Thank you very much. Okay, I said earlier, but let me go back. Actually, that morning I was already at the House of Assembly, just read people plenary, and I got a call that Mr. Speaker, House of Reps, was coming to the constituency to survey the level of damage. And I uh, actually got a call from him. I took permission from my speaker to quickly rush to Suleri, go around, and and then I saw, what I saw was heartbreaking. Because the mothers, they were there. And they were there. The, I saw people who said the same to be five years of their life. And things, the mobsters could take away, they destroyed. This one, this is not an Hollywood movie. Stop crying. No. Emotional blackmail. So, no. no. Um, you know, some had their daughters because there was no job. They had their daughters, you know, standing in their stead. And they're like, what are we going to do? Um, and we're just all feeling bad. And, you know, people saying, these people, it's, it's, not, it's not just hunger. It's anger. They were angry. And... Obviously, as things were going on, they were saying it was, you know, the things, you know, some of these, quote and unquote, I call them our youth, 
some of these people just get information fed off from the internet, from the social media space. And I said, and as a result of that, it was, um, that was the, that was what was, you know, people were talking about it whilst we were there. So I, I left there immediately, I went back to plenary. And it was when I got to plenary, to tell you the truth, I was, I had not said over it. I actually had something prepared, which I, if you notice, I didn't read. The only thing I read was um, my, my victims. But I was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed. Um, so I never meant that. So what I meant in five years was I, I watched as people were killed. Let's start from the 20th, when it happened. On 20th of October, I was devastated. I stayed all night awake, speaking with Mr. Speaker, and going through our heads. I talk. I got with, um, to DJ, DJ Smith's uh, switches um, uh, Instagram live. I saw it, but I, I started getting the threat. So I, I logged out because the threats were about, oh, you are sent army to go and kill us. And I'm like, oh my God. The thing is changing. It's not about that. So when I got to Tenerife on one day, it was the whole emotions that went through. And I saw people killing people. I saw people running around with things. I saw people even on that day of the 20th screaming because I hooked up a bit. If we don't control that narrative, we will not have a country. That was what I meant. Uh, absolutely that's why the, the, the video is coming from you who is uh, also a young youth because that's what the last time i checked you're actually 44 that means you're still part of the youth but you know we still have to talk about what you had said and even your explanation right now concerning what you're saying the right to protest you're saying that the nigerian youth should not protest but wait until after four years before they make their opinions heard is that what you're saying no, let's clarify you that quickly before no. we move along you have the right, you have the right constitutionally, you have the right to protest. No, I never insinuated that. What I was saying was that I was, I was encouraging, or rather, because I was very emotional, and I was quite upset. You know, I was saying all those who can influence this change, whilst we are doing this, we should also be sending another narrative, which is, we can win this by way of our election. We can, we can get a seat at the table. We can now have our budgets and the look at how we can influence the youth because the monsters didn't understand that it was a peaceful protest. If we now emphasize and put so much on vocational education and put so much in educating them, put so much in understanding who we are as a people, I think it would help. So that was what I, I, I meant. You know, that was what I meant. And I totally apologize if it came out the other way, the wrong way. And yes, as a youth, I totally stand for the rights of the youth. I totally stand for what the youth stands for. Now I'm really excited that you came on this interview because there's a lot of clarifications that you have made so far. But still talking about clarifications, there was something you said about, you know, the government at the center and the fact that the states don't have as much power as they're supposed to do. Um, are you calling for restructuring, Desmond, as we get ready to wrap up this conversation? Thank you very much. Now, this is part of what the narrative I was talking about, that I'm hoping, that I was hoping, that whilst we were talking about the important thing is you're being called to service if you're being called to service you're meant to be what they call a dump so how have you been able to cope like being a legislator and you're still having time for your friends on social media oh yes i I'm, i've made it a point of duty because the social media was very instrumental to my victory the social media was very instrumental to my victory so I have to let them know, step in, step out, everything that happens. And it's, I mean, this is 2015. So you have to let people abreast of situations and things going on. Politics shouldn't be as sad 
the situation as it's supposed to, as it's being portrayed. Should be something we should be talking about. Everybody's happy. Right? We are dissing somebody or we are encouraging somebody. The growth of Nigeria should be a collective one. Mr. Speaker, we need to address certain things. The Nigerian youth, the social media, 